Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another round of the Tobias Cup PvP tournament. A massive shout out to all the creators in this one. I'll leave all their links in the description. Go give them some love. We've got EO, Moon, God Doggos, and Gotcha Smack in this one. Massive shout out to Tobias. You guys know the drill. He organizes all of this and we just upload it to my channel. And also another massive shout out to Grimo for helping me cast this one. But let's get into it. Apply your color. Hey everyone, Tamias here, and welcome to the next installment of the Tamias Cup, where we turn the PvE memory chaos into a PvP game mode by pitting content creators against each other. And of course, this time we've got some returning players, Iwan Gacha Smack versus God Doggo and Destiny. They've had some wonderful showings in the past, and I'm excited to see what they've been cooking, especially because this cup is for the 2.1 version, which means Acheron is going to be available for both teams to pick up as the Raid Up Banner unit. And honestly, she is so damn good in design as well as power level. So I'm very, very excited to see what uh, they have been cooking. And without further ado, let's um, take it away. Our casters, Grimro, as well as Vulcan. Bring the force. The gleam of all glory. All right, and here we are with the pick and ban phase. I am Vulcan here with Grimro. Keen to see what we have in this pick and ban phase. Let's jump into it, Grimro. Okay, team one is kicking us off here with a Ruan May ban. Of course, taking out the queen of every composition. A very good idea if I do say so myself here, Vulcan. Yeah, definitely just a universally good unit trying to hide that from the enemy team. Okay, oh, and team two shooting back with a ratio ban here. Now, this is a great one because Sam, the boss of this memory of Kios, is notoriously difficult and breaking him is a priority. Definitely ratio, a great one for breaking that. But as always with pick and bans, you are banning it from yourself as well. So we'll have to see how it pans out. Oh, absolutely. Okay, our first pick here for Team 1 is Pella, which has pretty good synergy with Acheron, who is available this time. Yeah, Pella definitely, Pella stock's going up with Acheron, so obviously going to be a pick when both teams do have access to Acheron during this draft period. Okay, we're seeing a continued theme here, with Team 2 deciding they want to pick up a priority Nihility debuffer as well. They are also picking up the other premium imaginary DPS here in Imbibitor Lune. Picking up that Imbibitor is huge. I'm curious to see if the other team's going to let them have Sparkle. I don't think, but if they do, it's going to be a big opening. Okay, and just as you say, Vulcan, Team 1 here is not interested in enabling that Imbibitor and Sparkle combo here. They're going to steal that right away for themselves and deny Team 2 that god combo. Not just denial, but also just a fantastic pickup anyway. Absolutely. Okay, Team 2 is banning Welt here. It seems their strategy is to completely take away all forms of imaginary break and hopefully uh, like strand Team 1 from dealing with Sam. Yeah, we'll have to see picks on who picks up the remaining units for that Sam battle. Civil Wolf is going to be a big one and a highly sought after one as well. Okay, absolutely, Vulcan. Couldn't have said it better myself. And the final ban for Team 1 here is going to be Ting Yu, taking away another premium harmony unit. Yeah, just a universally safe ban anyway. Just as you predicted, Vulcan, Team 2 is going to lock in Silver Wolf. They are getting so much break for side 2 here. I'm really liking their draft so far. Yeah, Silver Wolf, like I said, she has really started to come back into the picture uh, with this new one. I don't know if anyone has Eidolons, but as you do stack up those Eidolons as well, she does become incredibly powerful being able to build for crit as well. Absolutely. Okay, Team 1 is locking in our Stellar Run Hunters of Tafta and Blade here. A very, very strong and interesting combo here. Maybe they're going to pick Tafta with Acheron. I absolutely love this pick. I love seeing all three Stellaron Hunt, original Stellaron Hunters come out at once. Kafka definitely strong, especially with the Trotters in this one. She is going to get some extra mileage out of that. All right, so we've got a Bronya and Luocha pick up here for Team 2. Picking up that last premium harmony unit here, and of course, grabbing one of the best healers in the game. Luocha is super safe in these draft modes as well. The guy just does what he needs to do every time. So fantastic pick up, and obviously missing out on Sparkle. They got the other booster 
Costa and Branya. Pretty safe picks there, in my opinion. All right, and Team 1 are going to go for Yukong here, which is a bit of an interesting pick, given they don't have Imbibitor or another imaginary DPS, but also Japan here, which does have quite a lot of synergy with Acheron, thanks to Trend of the Universal Market. Definitely good on the Japard because we can get that extra effect out of him and get the extra stacks. The Yukong one, we have seen some crazy wombo combos with Yukong in these PvP tournaments before, so maybe we are teeing up to see some more of that action. Okay, Team 2 are interested in picking up another 5-star healer here in Huapua, playing it a bit safe here, and also grabbing Hanya, presumably for that Imbibitor, to help a little bit out with skill point generation. Yeah, that appears to be it. They've got a really solid sustained roster here, and I do really like the Hanya pick. It makes a lot of sense, like you said, with Imbibaluna. Okay, and Team 1 are going to round out their composition here, picking up Lynx, and of course, Akaron herself here. Yeah, definitely a good pick on the Lynx. I feel like we do have that synergy. We did still have Fushwen available, but I do see where they are lining up with that Lynx for this formation. Okay, and of course, Team 2 are going to pick up their own Acheron as well. Very interesting. No Fushuan, but let's see how things pan out. All right, here we are with Team 1, Side 1. We have EO running the team of Sparkle, Yukong, Blade, and Lynx. Now, like I said, definitely see the synergy with Lynx in the Blade in this one, but the Yukong is a bit of a misfit to me here. Can you pick anything up from this one, Grimro? No, this is definitely a very interesting combination of units Vulcan. Of course, Yukong known for her massive 80% increased attack buff on her skill, but Blade can't really make use of that. So very interested to see what EU is putting together here. He's going to lead off with an immediate skill on Blade, increasing his chance to be hit and boost Blade straight up with that sparkle. He is ready to go here. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious to see what kind of damage we get out of this Blade's first attack. 71k on the cleave. It's quite respectable. So we are going to get some decent damage. And I'm curious to see what he does with this Yukong, whether he spams skill to try and get his energy up as much as possible to gain access to that ult. We got a big 145k follow up there from the blade as well with the ultimate ready. But yes, the Yukong is the one I'm super curious to see what happens in this one. Absolutely. It looks like he's going to be able to take out that Trotter here easily with Blade, which then should cascade to those adds, summoned by that Shield Man there, and hopefully take out this Life Leech effect here. Okay, we're going with the ultimate here straight from Yukon. We're going for a big attack here on Blade, and we're going to smash out that ultimate fully buffed here, 116k. Very nice. Triggering that MOC buff there, getting that Trotter debuff. Definitely. Unfortunately, we're not going to have the damage to do it in zero cycles this way, but I definitely think the one cycle is perfectly safe, judging on the HP that we've already got these enemies down to. But the big man is going to heal himself up with that one. I still don't think it's a massive threat to us. We've got the heal coming back up. Yukong did get a little bit low on that one, uh, but we're looking pretty fine. And that's the great thing with this team. You can spam as many skills as you want with Yukong and Lynx because you've just got an abundance of them and Blade doesn't really use too many. Absolutely. A little bit unfortunate. We did have to end up with a heal on the enemy there here, but it looks like we're going to get a pretty big combo here. A big follow-up attack, 164k from Blade, and he does look to have quite a lot of energy here, so we might be getting a another ultimate straight up here. We're going to get that wind break there, and hopefully it'll be triggered by the Trotter. It is a nice big chunk of damage there. Can we get it done? This cycle low here, Vulcan. We've got another sparkle boost coming up. Yeah, I think the sparkle boost is going to keep us safe. We have the option to get some additional break on there. We don't need to use the skill here with Yukong. It's not providing too much to Blade, and she was going to get her ult just off of the basic attack, so playing it safe there. And I don't think we're going to see too many issues. It's a matter of whether we want to use some of these ults or rely entirely on the Blade skill because we will not have access to... Oh, he does get the dot trigger, so he will get his follow-up here. So between the Yukong the blade skill and the follow-up we should get the kill and not have to rely on this ultimate so he should be able to get it done it's going to be a little bit tight he is checking where exactly he is at at the moment and i'm hoping we can see the damage from this follow-up get it done we do have the horse taking a turn and that dot damage will be able to finish it off anyway absolutely okay getting into the next phase with an ultimate available to blade getting the first cycle done in one cycle is very, very good as well. Sorry, the first wave there. So we're going to get this Yangqing down quick smart and set a great time, hopefully. Yeah, definitely good poised, uh, well poised with the ultimates on that one. Being able to finish off that first wave uh, with that follow-up attack into the dot. He is definitely checking his blade all the time uh, and not sure exactly what he's looking for. Maybe turns left. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though, because he's 
got abundance of skill points. Get that big ult for 74k into the basic attack for 66. Quite respectable. Needing that heal to top off because the Yukong, once again, is getting a little bit low. Probably going to skill with the Yukong just to generate that extra energy in this one, I would assume. Absolutely. Okay, the swords are out here and blade very strategically, I imagine, by EO. Has five charges straight up. Boom! 201k. Perfectly planned by EO there. Taking the swords out almost effectively immediately. Yeah, that was perfect play there. The last two swords, not much health remaining. Don't have to worry about trying to find the break on these things. You're just going to destroy them with Blade. Also, getting that Trotter down at the same time was super clutch. Getting those extra dot applications. Now, we are going to move into the next cycle, but can we clear it in this next cycle? That is going to be the question. Okay, a very interesting use of Yukong Ultimate here because we will have Lynx and Sparkle up next. I'm thinking that Eo might want to break here or something like that because he did go ahead and use that fairly early there. Well, you do seem to be cooking a pretty big turn here on Blade with that Ultimate available and almost ready. Yeah, he's probably going to queue up the ultimate. Didn't queue it up straight away. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not too sure on the play he is going for here. Uh, is he going to save the ultimate? Okay, he is saving the ultimate. Okay, he's trying to queue up his follow-up, maybe? I'm not too sure. It feels like a lot of wasted energy there. That it must be a bigger brain play than what I can comprehend. Can you see what's going on with that ultimate on Blade? Mm, I think he's maybe waiting for the ultimate from Sparkle, potentially waiting for that damage boost to try and get a bigger ultimate that way. Uh, we'll have to see, or maybe he's trying to break. I'm not 100% sure, but that Trotter is getting low here, so we are going to get a pretty big uh, damage burst here on Yang Ching because he already has a Wind Shear, a Bleed, and a Burn on him. Definitely. So there is that Sparkle ultimate of going in to boost the blade. I 100% expect to see that ult come straight away. Unless he's waiting for next round of swords or something like that. No, okay. There it is. He does get it off. 74k. We do get the Trotter to explode. We are going to get the break here. How much dot damage do we get? Okay, not too bad on the 58k, but it's not going to be enough to get him down in this cycle. But I think next cycle is a perfectly safe clear on this one. Absolutely. Well, we've got 28% remaining here, and it does look like we're going to absolutely get one turn here from Sparkle. But the question is, are we going to get two turns from Sparkle? And is that going to be enough to take Yang Ching out here in this very last cycle and get that really fast clear time? And we're not going to get the second Sparkle in there. So we it's going to rely on doing this one. We do get the follow-up, which is going to be a big addition. And we get that pop. How much damage do we get? Okay, 9% left. Can we get it here? Oh, and Blade is so close. So close to that ultimate as well. We're going to pop the Yukong ult. See what we can get out of this damage-wise. I think we might be just a little bit short. And that no. energy loss. Oh, there it is. The dance. the dance, dance, dance. I did not see it. I don't know how we missed that. But the dance, dance, dance. Super clutch. Getting in there. Allowing Sparkle to boost Blade into this cycle. Going to get the skill. Going to be buffed as well by Sparkle, and then we're going to go straight into the ult, and that should be 100% enough to get this done. Ooh, definitely very, very nice. Going to finish Yang Ching off and get a very nice clear speed here. Here we are with Team 2, Side 1, God Doggos, running the composition of Locha, Bronya, Imbibitalune, and Hanya. What do you make of this one, Grimo? Well, first, I am shocked, Vulcan. I highly expected Imbibit to be on side two, taking on Sam, but here he is, ready to dominate side one. In addition to that, this team looks pretty rough in terms of skill points. Running Bronya and Imbibitor is no joke here, but we're going to lead off straight with a Bronya skill here into a huge Imbibitor. 200k! Yeah, definitely on the slow Imbibitor. Going to get that extra damage out of him. Uh, and yeah, skill points is going to be the issue. We do have Hanya to alleviate, but we do have to play around with it very carefully uh, to make sure we don't run out of skill points by using that Hanya to try and generate an extra one along the way. So here we go. Hanya ult. Speed buff I don't think is going to be too effective here on the Imbibitor Lune because he's not going to overlap the Bronya. So it doesn't have the synergy on the speed, but we are definitely buffing him beyond belief with all these buffs and Hopefully, with this slow Imbibber Lune, we can get some massive damage. Just trying to choose his primary target uh, on whether he wants to try and kill the adds or not, or focus down this horse. Looks like we're going to be going for the horse, just taking time to decide. Looking at the break bars, I think, because we can break with the Hanya on the next turn if we do go the horse, but we go to just hit everything. We do have the ult after a 246k skill. We're getting that ult. Now, is it an E2 Imbibitor? That's what I'm not sure, and that's what we have to see right here. No, it is not. 
No, but oh my goodness, how is this Bronya getting another turn? She's already had two, she's getting a third one. Is this gonna be a zero cycle wave one? This is just a pure Hot Wheel speed Bronya taking another one, and I think we can get this done. Massive 197k, getting that first wave done in zero cycles. My goodness, Impibit and Lunate really showing his stuff here, but take a look at our skill points here, Vulcan. Things are getting a little bit dicey. We only have two. Are we going to use a basic attack here on Hanya? If we do, we're going to have to take a turn off from Impibit and Lunate. A very tough call. Yeah, definitely, because you need to spend that point to get one back, so it puts you in that awkward situation. We do have Loja on this team to generate some extra skill points, but it's just not going to be enough uh, for what we need to do. So curious to see if we use the Bronya basic here into triple uh, Imbibitor. Okay, well, it definitely looks like we're going to have to consider our options here. Going for a skill, potentially. I mean, Bronya does have her ultimate almost available, so maybe we'll get an extra skill point from that. I haven't been really keeping a track if it's the signature or not. Okay, maybe the skill, maybe the basic. Mm, it's a very I'm, tough call. I'm thinking basic's the play. Then you can do a triple stacked in Bibita, and then Bronya's got her next turn up quicker. But yeah, this is definitely a pickle, because with the skill, she probably does get her ultimate. Okay, there we go. We get a triple stack on the Imbibra Lune. That is the safe play because then we're going to generate another skill point from the Hanya skill. Then we're going to generate another one from Lochi using his basic attack. And then we can use the Bronya skill into Imbibra Lune on the next turn. So not too sure whether he's thinking about going for the Trotter there or something like that. Uh, but we do have Imbibra's ultimate up as well. Probably going to wait for the next Bronya turn to get that buff and the ultimate buff before we use that ultimate. Oh, absolutely. Really taking his time here to really consider these skill points. It's not easy playing this team. Absolutely not. Going to invest that skill point here in Hanya. Now we are once again in a pretty difficult situation, though, here. We're gonna, are we gonna use Bronya's skill here? Because if we do, we still won't have enough skill points to use in Bibita's three enhanced basic, even after his ultimate. Oh, it's a tough call. I don't know how copium this is, but could he perhaps use Hanya on Bronya to speed her up to get her, like, an extra turn through cycles? Okay, that was too much copium. I didn't know the speed syncing. I thought maybe it could be a thing, uh, but it looks like we are just going to go play it safe using it on Imbibita. And then Bronya is once again, probably going to have to basic. I don't see a way. If it was an E2 Imbibita and Lune, we're in a much better situation, but being at a zero, I assume it is, or E1, We've got to make our decisions now. I think using the Bronya ult is the play, but even with he basic, I don't think we... Actually, we can basic with Bronya. Ooh, because we would have got the extra skill point from the ult on Imbibita Lune, which then would have had us at three skill points to allow Imbibita to use the three point uh, basic. So curious to see here how much damage we do get out of this ult, but this is definitely a tricky team to play with managing these skill points. Absolutely, but it seems that we did have uh, an additional way to gain skill points here because we have an extra skill point left over. So I think this is either an S1 Bronya or an E1 Bronya there because we were able to get out of that pickle there pretty easily, which is absolutely fantastic here. Making use of those Eidolons on Bronya or the Signature, I wasn't paying too much attention, but definitely getting some skill points back. Yeah, getting those two extra sanct Squamous Sanctuary Sacto, if I could try and say the name of it from the ultimate, but yeah, I don't know where that bonus skill point came from, or maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention. But that is super solid. We did get the full-on ultimate, fully buffed on the Imbibita Lune, which is absolutely fantastic. But like I said, there is so many things to manage in this team composition to try and get it done. Uh, I think this is one of those situations where me personally would basic, so we can do a triple stack on the Imbibita on his next attack, and then we get Bronya up quicker. It is super tricky. Even with that Hanya seeming to be a skill point generator, it's just not enough to rely reliably cycle through these two characters. Yes, absolutely. We could use the Luocha ultimate here to gain an extra skill point, but that still wouldn't give us enough to use Bronya's skill on Imbibitor and then still use our three enhanced basic here. So it's definitely, oh, it's just such a tough decision on how to manage this and still get enough uh, speed to kind of match what Iuro just performed with his blade composition. Yeah, so it's it's such a torn decision, and I don't know why he's targeting the Trotter when we can if when on his basic he can attack Yang Ching and uh, generate that skill point. So I'm not too sure what the play is there. Maybe he's going to trigger it with Locha and just trying to get more damage in on the Trotter. Definitely curious to see what the end decision of this one is, but it, it, there is a lot of thought. I don't know how many chess moves ahead he's thinking on this one, but I'm tipping it's a few. But we can see if we do use the basic, Bronny comes back with the 43 action, so he does go ahead. And use the basic on the trotter 
And there we go. We have we have got the, th the skill points and we get frozen on the Bronya. Now that is, I'm curious to see where that delays her into, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. She will get another turn before the Imbibitor to boost him in this one. But dude, I am just, <laughs> I'm getting stressed on this run. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so he's going to maybe opt to go for a three enhanced basic attack here, which should give him enough energy to access that Imbibitor ultimate, which should hopefully give us enough energy to go ahead and get a combo with Bronya coming up here. But we are still going to be pretty tight on skill points, especially if we use this Hanya skill here. Okay, um, so we are using it. Yeah, we, we are okay, though, because we do have Locha ult there to actually trigger it as well. So I think we're not in too bad situation. Unfortunately, Bronya does have to basic, but she is going to get another turn in this cycle which is super clutch. We're going to get that extra generation here. It's a matter of what he wants to do with the Imbibra Lune uh, because he will act before the Bronya. And whether he wants to use that ult straight away, I'll have to let it pan out and see where the skill points fall. But once again, a lot of thought has to go into this team. Yes, there is that basic attack, just like you said, Vulcan. And it looks like we will get that extra Bronya turn. But the question will be, is the full Imbibitor Wombo combo of ultimate into triple basic going to be enough to finish off this Yang Ching? 31% HP remaining. Oof. And we do have an Imbibitor turn before Bronya goes. Yes. So we do have quite a lot of stuff we can do. So will he use just an Imbibitor skill, wait for the Bronya buff before he uses the ultimate? That's what I'm curious to see. Mm, it's a tough call. We still have our Luocha ultimate as well, so we can trigger that Hanya passive here and get another skill point on top of that. I think we will have to use the ultimate or we'll be out of skill points for the Bronya and she won't be able to skill. So we need those extra stacks from the ultimate to even enable Bronya to use her skill. The only other option was a two skill point uh, skill first into it, but this is going to be the option as you can see here. We go, we get the break as well. Now we've got the Bronya boost. I'd be using the Luocha ult and squeezing every little bit of damage I can out of this one. We're going to have a two skill point uh oh. skill here can we get it done the ultimate the ultimate granted an extra skill point from the bronya signature and that is going to be enough to get another three enhanced basic attack i did completely missed that. that that is super clutch on the bronya and we get it done oh my goodness all right, here we are with Team 1, Side 2. Taking on Sam, we have Gotcha Smack with the team of Acheron, Pella, Kafka, and Japard. It's a pretty synergistic team. What concerns do you have with this one, Grimro? Well, for me, Vulcan, the only concern I really have in this team is whether or not Sam is going to take this team out. It's all going to come down to how defensive Gotcha Smack can play with Japard and how good he is at keeping up those shields at all times. Yeah, definitely, and hopefully we do have the burn cone on him so that he can keep applying those burns, giving Acheron stacks, but we do have a very solid team to form around Acheron to give those stacks, and we did just get a stack on that AoE, meaning Acheron is getting that, and then we had the Pella skill generate that extra stack, and we're already into ult range for Acheron, going straight for it, best animation in the game, absolutely love to see this, 90k, 172k, 284k, 305k, into the 555k, straight away, wasting no time, soaking in that damage, I don't care how long Acheron's been around, she is just so enjoyable to watch, and I don't think it will ever get old. Absolutely. This is a badass unit. No questions about it. And the question is probably going to be on my mind is, can we get this done in zero cycles here? We are stacking up that Acheron ultimate real quick. But I can see by the turn order here, she appears to be on attack percent boots. So she's not going to get another move here, Vulcan. But it doesn't look like she needs it. No, and I just wanted to make note of that really nice basic attack used by Acheron to proc the additional follow-up by Kafka to activate her ult. It was the energy she needed, and I thought that was a great play uh, to use that basic just purely for that synergy. Oh, absolutely. So we do have an Acheron ultimate almost available here, but Sam is already going in on this team. Pella is at half health, and I'm not seeing a Japan ultimate anywhere on sight. No, Japati is lagging in the energy, so we're just going to have to go all in on the damage and see what we can do. Looks like he's trying to take care of the ad uh, to not get in interrupted by those bleeds and stuff like that. So he's trying to get as much damage out as he can. Unfortunately, not going to get the break with the Japad. So we're going straight to the Sam, hitting him with that skill into Kafka. 
We're gonna pop some dots, nothing crazy, straight into the ultimate, and then we're already back around to Akron, sitting at four stacks. Currently, we do have the robot broken, which is super handy, but keen to see what we can do out of this one. We got a 45k skill, nothing too phenomenal there, but as we start ramping up, I think we will get some nice damage out of this next ult with that enemy going down. Japard's shield is just around the corner now. He is about to proc it, and that is a massive lifeline for this team. We, we, we do have the reduced healing, so the shielding is a good effect, but we're rolling straight into this ultimate with Acheron, getting 136k out of it. Oh, absolutely. Okay, we are burning though, Vulcan. So we need to keep that shield up at all times here or we are going to be in trouble. Now, fortunately, Japan puts the shield up here, but it's almost already going to be gone here from the massive wombo combo attack here from Sam. So, I mean, this is looking very dangerous. It is looking dangerous, but I like to see it. It's just an all-out race. We're not too stressed about anything else except pumping out as much damage as possible. There comes the... We are going to have the ultimate from Pella, though, getting that defense shred, getting extra stacks, moving into Kafka once again, getting extra stacks, getting extra applications, and we should be able to get ourselves a big ult. Do we want to skill with the Japard here to try and get that extra energy for the ultimate? I think he is within range, but we are going for the Akron ult here. 90k into 122 into 243k. Now we have Sam below half health, but he still does have about half of his break bar remaining. Oh, yes. It looks like we are probably going to have to use a skill here to get to Japan's ultimate. Yep, absolutely. That is going to be coming online immediately. We do also have Kafka's ultimate here. So the thing I'm looking for now, Vulcan, is can we break this Sam and turn his fire off so our team stops burning alive? Definitely. So not too bad. I think we are going to be pretty safe with this one. We are going to hit, get hit by the next attack, but we are going to be safe from it due to that shield. So the shield, the, honestly, super clutch on the energy generation there on the shield uh, to get that up for Japard, because if we didn't have that shield, we would have been out of action. Oh, absolutely. So using that skill very strategically on your part is really paying off here. And it does look like we are trying to line up a break here on Sam. Oh, if only we could... Oh, there it is! Actually, very nice. He is broken, and I think we are pretty much in the clear in terms of staying alive now. Yeah, it's no dramas now. It's just about how quick we can get this damage out. Unfortunately, Akron doesn't have her turn until just after the next cycle. So we're not going to be able to do it this cycle, but I am seeing a possible... Is it two cycle clear we're up to? We'll put it on the screen at the end, but I'm pretty sure it's a two cycle clear. We are going to be looking at in this one. Oh, but Vulcan, you forgot Acheron has her ultimate available here, so can we get it done here? Is it going to be enough to take that 23% here along with Kafka's move? Oh, just short. There it is, and the explosion from the pig into the dot tick. Got it. Yeah, you're right. I was not paying attention to the stacks, and we get it done. All right, here we go with our final contestant, Team 2, Side 2. We have Moon running the team of Acheron, Black Swan, Silver Wolf, and Ho Ho. Once again, this side, we do have a pretty synergistic team. What are you thinking on this one, Grim? Oof, I think this is a fantastic team and one I would pick for myself here. Silver Wolf is a huge asset to have against Sam. Hopefully, you're going to allow for fast breaking on him to minimize damage and maximize output of your team. Definitely, and we do have plenty of debuffs to apply with this team, so it shouldn't be an issue. We are lacking a preservation unit that can apply the extra debuffs through the burn cone, but I think with the rest of this team, we're going to have no issues getting one extra damage, two extra break, and then extra stacks out of this Acheron. So I think it's a very synergistic team, and as long as we do have enough healing out of this uh, Ho Ho, we should be pretty fine. Uh, obviously, the energy going amiss because we don't need it on Acheron, but still going to be huge on the Silver Wolf, who do, does often have a little gap in her energy regeneration which can maybe get made up for by the Ho Ho. Oh, absolutely. Very interesting to see this Acheron is a very fast Acheron compared to Gotcha Smack Slow Acheron, so it'll be curious to see which one ends up being a little bit stronger here. And it's going to be really critical, it seems, from this team, which I'm seeing Vulcan, to get another Acheron ultimate here, because I'm not sure Black Swan's dots can get this done. Oh, well, maybe I'm wrong, actually. That was some pretty big damage. We do have a ton of dots on this guy, and we do have some breathing space to see how much damage it deals, and we get it done easily. Okay, and we've got the ultimate ready from Silver Wolf straight up, putting the damage into Sam, not worrying about waiting for it to get break application. We're just going straight in for it. And this Silver Wolf is going to have another ultimate ready by the time we do have access to his break bar anyway. And we do have that extra weakness applied. So we are set to break this guy if we need to and getting some big damage out of that Akron with another 314k. There we go. 
Juan, though, is absolutely out of control. She is doing as much damage and keeping up with Akron while also supporting her. It's incredible. Yes, but we are definitely taking some damage. So are we opting not to use the skill? Okay, I was going to say, we <laughs> looks like we weren't going to use the skill there for a second. I was going to be worried about survival, but we are very safe now. We've got that ultimate up. We're fully topped off. We've got Silver Wolf's ult ready to go as well. Opting straight into it, maybe for stacks. I didn't know if we would wait. Uh, Sam does have another turn. Doesn't take a turn until after Silver Wolf anyway. So we do get to generate all that energy back up with Silver Wolf. So we're pretty safe on that one. Absolutely. Gonna go ahead and use that Black Swan ultimate here. Really stacking up the Arcanist. Looks like the plan here. But oof. Are we gonna go ahead and try and use the Acro? No, we're not. We're gonna go with a basic attack there. Basic attack has skill point issues and we're trying to generate energy on that. So Wolf, no, we are just stacking up some skill points. So I'm curious to see what the play was going for two basic attacks there when Ho Ho doesn't have to uh, use her skill here. Or maybe we are planning on the necessity to use a Ho Ho skill to heal uh, is what we were lining up. No, we're using another basic. Okay, we're up to four skill points. So we're Ooh, perfectly fine easy. on skill points and we're going to be start taking some damage with that Black Swan here. Yes, but we do have the Akron ultimate available. The question is going to be, do we want to use it immediately or are we going to save it up for later? And I almost are a little bit concerned about this Hua Hua. Does she have enough healing output to counter Sam's massive healing debuff that he does on the team? And here we go with that ultimate, going into, what, a 500k ultimate, getting the pop on the Trotter, getting some massive dot damage in there as well. And even if we lose a unit here, we're going to be pretty safe, in my opinion. Uh, we, we're at three stacks currently. Uh, even if we take a bit of health damage, we should be fine. We will get the ultimate, I believe, here on the Silver Wolf after this skill. But you got to decide what you want to do, because Ho Ho is going to run out of her buff, so she will want to skill. Okay, we are saving it for the Ho Ho. Hopefully we don't get dropped here. Getting straight into those ultimates from the damage taken, which is super clutch there. Getting into the Black Swan after the Silver Wolf, getting a good chunk of damage in. And where are we at? He's at tiny, almost non-existent break bar. And I think we're pretty safe to get it here. We're at eight stacks on the Akron and we have a Black Swan turn coming up. So I think that is gonna be enough to get our ultimate and get the job done in this cycle. Absolutely, what an incredible run. The absolutely insane use of Hua Hua ultimate healing there to keep it alive. And Akron is going to bring us home for a ridiculously fast clear here, Vulcan. <laughs> and a nice little overkill on that one too. And what wonderful showing from both teams yet again. <laughs> Congratulations to the winners. And honestly, fantastic, fantastic job. We always get to see some cool new strats. And uh, also the new rate of banner unit. Akron is just so damn powerful and as always do check out the content creators their links will be down below because they'll be showcasing their own team builds as well as the thought process behind running the various team comps and if you like what you see do you leave a comment and like on vulcan's video this helps support us and uh, thank you again hoyoverse for sponsoring this video